Good afternoon, and uh, welcome to Phoenix Church of His Presence. We just thank you for joining us this afternoon, uh, and we just ask that uh, you just come expecting this this afternoon. And uh, let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, for your many blessings, Lord. Father, we just come in with an expecting heart, Lord. Father, we lay aside every thing that might hinder what you want to do in our lives and might distract, Father, from what you're wanting. And, Father, we lay it aside, so, Father, so that you might move in our lives. Father, it's all about you. It's all about you and you alone. And, and Father, so for this next two hours, three hours, Father, we focus all of our attention on you, Lord. Father, have your way in this service. Have your way, Father, in our lives. Have your way, Lord, in in this time that we've come to worship you, Lord. And we just pray that you would be with us. Anoint this team, Father. Anoint the speaker, Father. For anybody that's coming, Father, give them safe travels. Get them here quickly, Father. And, and Father, I pray that you would even touch them where they're at, Lord. Father, for anybody who might be watching this service later on, that, Father, you would fill that space with your presence. Lord, have your way. Move in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray.
the splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great how great is our God, tender of the King, of in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. our God and sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God in age to age he stands
our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God, how great is our God, and sing with me.
myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give 
myself away so you can use me. I give myself away.
belongs to you. That means every problem, every trouble, every struggle, Father, it belongs to you because my life is not my own. It belongs to you, Lord. And so, Father, this morning we surrender. We surrender our lives back to you, Lord. Give our lives back to you, Jesus, so that, Father, you may use them and use us as you will, Lord. Father, that means we surrender everything, Lord. We surrender the good things and the bad things because they are all part of our lives. We surrender them to you, Jesus. do it. 
them, Father, what you are. Because, Father, I trust you. And, Father, I... Father, I ask that you would forgive me because I haven't said that to you enough that I trust you. I trust you, Lord, because you are God, because you are more than enough. Because there's nothing in this life that is too great for you. So, Lord, I ask that you would just move in my life, that you would move in our lives, that, Father, you would use us as you will, Lord. We surrender. We worship you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. Have your way in the rest of this service, Lord, in your name. Just continue to move, Lord.
Yeah. 
the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light.
precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, Lord. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. See, there's power.
very simple words. For those of you watching online, I say them all the time. I'll say it again. Come to church. Come to church. Three simple words. Come to church. I'm not going to give you any reasons because it's, that's just going to ruin the surprise. Come. It's not even a surprise. Just come to church. Get here and get what God has for you. Get here and hear what God has for you. Get here and feel Feel the realness that is our God. Come to church. Come to church. All right. There it is. Um, and continuing in the awesomeness of God's presence, um, let's go ahead and give glory to his name with some testimony. Is that okay, Pastor Paul? All right. Um, okay. I forgot mine. It's going to come back to me. I am thankful. <laughs> I always want to try to start out because I can't ask you guys to give a testimony if I don't give a testimony myself. Um, but I want to thank God for my husband and my husband's best friend who just happens to be my cousin Dave and uh, my brother being a little bit late today, which is totally okay. Um, but just being up here with minus two people, so with my mom um, at home with my son because he has the stomach bug that went around daycare. He caught it at the last day. Um, but he's in good spirits, and he's feeling better now. Uh, but my mom is at home with my son. My brother was a little bit late today, which is totally fine. And so it's just me, my husband, and my cousin Dave. And I am thankful for the spirit that flows through us because whether there's three of us, two of us, all five of us, there's God, and that's the most important. So I'm thankful for that and God's ability to move and flow through us and being able to play with those two who are near and dear to my heart. I am thankful. All right. Other testimonies? All right. Amen. Our God is a loving God and merciful God, but he's coming back soon, and he's going to do some justice for the injustice that is done to the people of God, even the martyrs and everybody, so I thank God. But I want to tes testify about this um, individual that I witnessed to at a quick trip, and um he was asking for some change, and so I gave him some change, and I started talking with him, and um, I said, you know what? You know, people around the world are more worried about, you know, the Antichrist coming back, and they're, you know, the, the, the son of perdition, you know, the 666 man. Everybody's getting ready for him. He goes, yeah, that's true. And I said, but once I started talking about Jesus, that got his attention. And like, oh, yeah, that Jesus is coming back. And I'm just like, and then I went on to testify about, you know, all the signs that are coming back for it in terms that Jesus is coming soon. And, you know, you got to be ready. And you got to get your people ready. You got to know everybody that you know that's ready. And I said, you, are you a Christian? He goes, no. And so do you want to be? And he goes, I don't know. Well, I said, can I pray with you? I just prayed with him and just prayed that he would just receive God right there. And I believe he was touched. But what caught his attention was that w when I brought him the, the subject on the Antichrist coming versus Jesus Christ coming back, that was the way I, I got his attention and I was able to talk to him more about Jesus and tell him why Jesus cry died on the cross and died for her sins. And he was listening intently. So even though I didn't lead him to the to lead him to cro to Jesus, um, I prayed salvation for him. And I just prayed that wherever he goes, that whatever I said, may I just 
watered, you know, like the spirit for him to prepare somebody for somebody else to come and minister to him. So God bless. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Um, okay. Any other testimonies? Oh, wait. No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, I was late, but God's delays are intentional. Because the breaking away from the ordinary caused the extraordinary to take place in this house today. Uh, my testimony is is simple. God is God. Uh, we were blessed to go up to the White Mountains to hang out with Gerald and do some things up there. And uh, we got to take Megan's dad's Jeep, which gets a whopping 15 miles per gallon. And we picked it up and had some delays. Uh, delays, I'm just going to put it that way. Came back, got some gas, filled up the Jeep. And, uh, you know, 15 miles per gallon and you fill it up, you're not really expecting much. And we drove from the QT off of I-17 in Camelback and got all the way to Apache Junction. And the Jeep had only used two miles of gas. Yeah, two miles of gas. And I told Megan, I was like, can you look at this? The thing has not changed. It's literally used two miles of gas. And we've driven from I-17 in Camelback out here to Apache Junction. Um... And then I was like, you know what, let me pray. And so <laughs> we were praying, and we had planned to go snowboarding yesterday. And a couple weeks back, I had a phantom knee problem. I stepped wrong. The knee swole, and it hurt, and it has been bothering me the last two weeks. I've been doing the physical therapy I know of. I've iced it. I've elevated it. I've taken precautions, but it still just would not go away. So when Megan and I self were praying, I got done, and I said, amen. I was like, you know what, wait. And I was literally just kind of joking around. I was like, hey, God, I'm back. Um, I got one more thing. So we're supposed to go snowboarding tomorrow, and this is my prayer. We're supposed to go snowboarding tomorrow, and if you could make my knee, like, good to go for snowboarding, that would be great. Amen. And that was it. That was my prayer. No these, thous, and all that kind of fancy stuff. That was literally my prayer. And um, we got up there. We hung out with Gerald Friday night, and I woke up Saturday morning, and, and my knee felt good. It felt really good. And Gerald's like, hey, how's your knee, bro? And I was like, you know, I would say it's probably about 90-ish percent. I'm not 100 percent there, but about 90-ish percent. And so I went to the mountain with hesitation, a little nervous. Um, I know Megan didn't want to snowboard alone. She said she'd do it if she had to, but I wasn't going to let her snowboard alone. So I was like, you know what, let's, let's strap up, let's go, let's do this thing. And I went, and um, <laughs> right off the bat, going up the lift to the bunny hill. Just put the snowboard on, go up the lift. As soon as we're getting off the lift, bam, wipe out. <laughs> Super embarrassing. And I was like, I got up, popped up, knee was good. I was like, okay, we're good. Let's just keep going. Long story short, the knee is fine. We spent the day up there, did the snowboarding, all that we wanted to. The pain is gone. I will say that I aggravated it a little bit, but I was sitting back here during service, and I did that Mr. Miyagi thing. I don't know, you know, just put my hands together. Started rubbing it on my knee, and I feel real good. Like, no more pain, no more limitation. Like, I used to not be able to bend down. Everything feels normal. Like, it feels really good. So I'm thankful for that. Um, God's showing us that he's real, and th that's what the world needs. They need somebody to not tell them all this stuff about God, but just be God before them and let God take care of the rest. Right? Kind of like what Pat said. He prayed for this man, and he's praying that God's going to go with him wherever he's going, and that something's going to take place. So that's my testimony. God took a Jeep that gets 15 miles per gallon and upped that up. He took my knee that was feeling kind of cruddy, made it feel great. Got here today, and the whole, like, theme of the weekend was God's delays are intentional. Megan said it. Gerald said it. My mom said it. And here we are. So very thankful. Very thankful that even in our delays, God can still have his way. Amen. All right. Your testimony. Man, 
John, that's called old age. We bind that in the name of Jesus, rebuke that. Um, I just like to thank God because of his delays. Um, and it's funny as you were um, talking, we, um, we had a week uh, in, in, in our house and or with our house. We, uh, we've been wanting to buy a house this for a while. And, and it's funny because we started praying for it. Lord, you know what to do. Lord, you know what we need. Lord, bless our finances. Lord, it's in your hands. We just pray for this house. We pray for the right house, this and that. And we've been praying. And, and basically every night for the last three, four months, we pray as a family before Ezra goes to bed. And that's always in our prayers every time. And, and it's because we went to apply and I'm like, yeah, the Lord is going to bless us and this and that. And it was like, we can approve you, but it's going to be way too much for what you guys want right now. And it's funny because that's not necessarily the testimony that I wanted to give, right? I wanted to stand in front like, God is awesome, this and that. We got a house, but it's not. But I do know that God's delays are intentional. It wasn't time for us to have that right now. And God said, just wait, because I still have something better for you right now. And we ended up getting a house that is 800 square feet more than what we rent now for the same price. And so we get a bigger house. We get more space. We get um, more room for just the things that we like want to do as a family. And it might not be us buying a house, but God's saying, it's okay, just wait. I got you. Let me handle a couple things first. But while you're waiting for that blessing, here's another one. And I just thank God for that. I thank God that he continues to be God in every situation. Those delays are intentional. And I thank him for those. Um, and so I just thank God for that. I thank God for his many blessings in our lives. Um, and Pat, I would just say that your testimonies, every time you're up here, the one thing that is every time that Pat comes to give a testimony, if you haven't really caught on sometimes, I was talking to, to so-and-so about God. I was talking to so-and-so about God. I was here, and I was talking to so-and-so about God. And Pat, I just want to say that that always blesses me. And sometimes I'm sitting there, and I'm like, God, I wish I had that boldness. Lord, I wish I could just go to QT and talk to the dude that just asked me for money and just saying, <laughs> instead of doing one of those. And so I just want to say, Pat, that your testimonies really do bless me because that boldness I really do admire in you. And so I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Same, Dave, same. Um, all right. Any other testimonies? No? Good? All right. Another one. God's delays are deliberate. Amen? I don't know where to start, but uh, this service today was awesome. <laughs> Just awesome. I, I love messy services. I love where there's a lot of snot flowing, and, you know, that's what we call a service. Amen. A lot of snot. So much you have to go change tissues a few times. Anyhow, um, it's been a wonderful week. I've just got God has been so good all week. Um, it was smooth sailing pretty much. And uh, I have to say that every answer that I was seeking this week, God answered. Um, a lot of times we tend to look at the storm and tend to try to understand it and measure it and see what in the world is, is going to happen. You think ahead of God. And there are times when God will specifically and deliberately set delays in your life to slow you down and get you right back into proper alignment with God's will. And that's why I believe that God's delays are deliberate. A lot of times we get too ahead of ourselves and we begin to think into our situation a lot more than we need to. And I think uh, what was said about let tomorrow worry about itself, you know, I think that's something that we ought to put into practice. However, I um, I just thank God for just the wonderful people in my life. Um, a long time ago, I guess God knew that I needed some good friends in my life. And uh, that's what happened. And God put friends in my life at the right time, at the right place, even though they show up a whole day late. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just say that because they were late. They were not late. They were late. <laughs> they were they were late late and uh, 
God was teaching them a lesson, and God was teaching me a lesson in the waiting and the patient department. <laughs> and uh, I was getting worried because it was starting to snow. I was like, John, it's starting to snow. You better hurry up and get up here, you know. And I don't know how many texts I got. We're on our way. <laughs> Three times. We're finally on our way. We're now on our way. We're actually finally leaving. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> you know. But, it, but it's good. And, and today I, I just want to say that God knew um, the plan that he had for my life. And um, I'm so thankful today that I'm able to be here at this church and be a part of this this family, this this group. We're not the typical church. We're crazy and fun, and anything could happen in our services, and it brings a lot of joy. You know, um, I can get a little bit too serious when I get in too involved with my work, and it's good to have fun. It's good to have that relaxation. And it's hard to have that kind of relaxation back home. So I escape to Phoenix, and when I come to Phoenix, that's where I relax. But it's also good when you get to relax in your own environment. And this weekend, I, I say that when John and Megan came up, I found such peace in it. It was something I needed. Um, sunrise was amazing. It, it was like things happened left and right. Um, being in God's favor opens many doors. It opens a lot of opportunities. Um, my face is red. You know, I'm burning because I stood in the snow for three hours waiting for John to come down the mountain yesterday. <laughs> and I was looking for Megan, but she was on the ski lift. She was not coming down the mountain. And uh, during that waiting, I just got to stand there and look at the people, look at the place, look at everything that God was doing around me. And uh, I, I, I don't deserve the life I have. I really don't. You know, and sometimes I st yesterday I was standing there thinking, God, why, why am I where I'm at? Why do I have what I have? And I was thinking, God, I just can't thank you enough. You know, you think about everything that God has done for you in your life. It's impossible to name. And um, I have very few friends, but I have good friends. And all of you are in that list. You know, Dave, Anna, Carrie, all of you. You know, and, and, and I have to agree, Pat's testimony, he reminds me of Johnny Appleseed. You know, just planting seeds as he goes along. And uh, they all grow in its own time and its own season. And then hearing those testimonies, um, it, it's just amazing. I know I'm all over the place today, but um, this morning I had a very rude awakening. About 8 o'clock this morning, we're supposed to get breakfast. I was being lazy. And God hit me in the gut and just wrecked me while I was still in bed. Just the goodness of God was just like he just poured it over my, my heart. And I knew something was was in store for today, and I was so excited. I, I was so excited to come this direction, and God was doing some amazing things along the way. But I want to say that there's more in store for you, church. There's more in store for you in, in the days ahead. Um, let's not just let this experience today just be a today thing, but let's take it with us wherever we go. And this morning, I just couldn't help but just tell God how good he is and how worthy he is. And how much he just amazes me. And um, we're going to see some miracles. We're going to see some signs and wonders. Um, I, I, I just want to say be ready, church. Just be ready. God is going to do some things to you very quickly. Be ready. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. You know, and, and keep in step with God. I, I'm supposed to be testifying yes, but I want to exhort you at the same time. Keep in step with God. Keep at his pace. Don't relax, because if you relax, you might miss out. You know, I, as much as I wanted to tell John and Megan, let's just call it a day and, and slowly drive back. You know, I just knew I couldn't, because there's an urgency in my heart to come here. Um, yeah, we planned the weekend. We planned to be in sunrise and such, but we also remembered that we have church today, and we couldn't miss it. We raced. I don't know how many times they passed me, and I'm... I ended up behind them, even though I left before them. I don't know what th what that is, you know. And I'm glad that they're starting to experience what I often experience with my gas. 
you know, my gas level sometimes don't drop. Sometimes uh, it increases as I drive. And they got a taste of that, you know. And I, I was excited when John told me, hey, we only use this much gas. I was like, hey, that one night I was driving home and I was sending him pictures. Look, my gas mileage is increasing. It's increasing. When I got home, it was still at 434 miles to empty. And that lasted two extra days, <laughs> you know. And, it, and so you come out and visit me if you want to see signs, wonders, and miracles. <laughs> I'll give you another reason to come up, you know. God does great things when you're on this journey to come visit me. But I just wanted to say, church, you are the best. The people here in this place, everyone, all of you, you mean a lot. You mean the world to me. Um, You all have a special place in my heart. And when I see you, your faces, your uniqueness, the personality that you all carry, it shows me the love of God. And I feel the love of God flow through you. And I don't think you hear it enough that you as the body here are amazing. You are who you are and that um, I appreciate you. That's it. I'm done. Well, it looks like I'm going to the White Mountains. <laughs> Put some gas in the truck. <laughs> and you have a testimony, Pastor Paul? Yeah. Oh, okay. I have a testimony this morning. Also, it's like I'm enjoying listening to everybody else. And Gerald's not kidding. I've been in the car. We are at a conference, and he had forgot to get some gas. And he goes, Paul, he goes, pray, I need some gas. And right about the time he said that, we looked down, and he goes, do you see what I'm seeing? I said, I'm seeing what you're seeing. And the gas gauge is almost on empty like that. All the startups just like this. So what did it, was it three quarters when it stopped? Almost full when it stopped. And we used to sit there in the car watching the gas gauge go up. And Gerald goes, well, guess I don't need gas no more. So, I mean, yeah, there are wonderful things that take place. I want to thank the Lord this morning, or this afternoon, because um, a couple of months ago, I just told the Lord, I said, I'm not doing enough. I said, I, I, I've got a couple of things in my heart I want to do. And I said, I'm, I feel like I'm just sitting and I want something to do. And I got a phone call, and just about maybe a couple of weeks later, and said, hey, uh, Pastor, some of our former members, and said, we'd like to uh, start up a Bible study again. I said, really? Yeah, we'd like to have you come up. Can we, can we do this? I said, let me just pray. I said, just, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm still where I'm supposed to be. And I prayed. And... Um, they called again and said, can you give us an answer? And I said, yeah, I'll do it. And it was fun because we set a date and everything else. And I, I felt in my heart, I, I know what I'm going to be talking about. I had it ready. You know, in my heart, I just had it prepared. And so it comes the day of the uh, Bible study. I said, okay, let me, let me put down what we're going to go over now. And I knew where I was, g- I felt I knew where I was going. And as I started to write things down, it was like, Oh, God, <laughs> what is going on? I said, okay, let me go right here then. And I started to write it down. And I kept just, I spent two hours. I had it going really good. And I heard the Lord just say to me, quit already. Listen. And I went up, highlighted everything, and pushed the delete button on two hours worth of work. And I'm like, where are we going? He said, name it this. He said, I want you to ask him five questions. And he goes, here's the scripture references for five questions. And so when I got there that night, you know, we, we had a, a bite to eat, and then we sat down and we started. Uh, I told him what I was going to do. I said, this is where I was at. I said, I was going to go this route. And the Lord said, no, do this. So I gave him the title. And we just jumped right in. I gave him the first question. And the first question was, you say that I need Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Why? And that's, that was the, just the first question. And then I told him, the next four questions are loaded questions. I mean, they're questions that are just going to, there's a, I have a reason for you to understand them. We started off and 
you know, Bible study usually goes, you know, a half hour or so. We went for an hour and a half. And they were the ones, my, our, our group, they were the ones who were jumping into it, asking questions. We had some really great discussion. And, you know, I showed them what the, where the Word of God was. Um, I had it written down for them to take a look at it. And then we came to the last question. And the last question uh, basically was the loaded question. It says, Jesus was the Son of God. You know, we knew that. He was born in a human body, human just like us. Had to be. So tell me everything he did. Write down every single thing he did. Because if he was the Son of God that had no extra special power than we did, and he was without sin and he had that communication with God, he did all of these different things. And do you not realize that the disciples did it, the 70 did it, and we also can do it? And I'm not preaching. I'm sorry. I just got excited. But we really, really, really talked, and, and I mean, it was very, very good discussion. And then we left that night, and one of the, one of the gentlemen uh, had said to me, he said, um, is there any way that you can meet with me on Saturday? And so we went out for coffee that night, and we sat down, and I hadn't seen this gentleman for probably – almost 10 to 15 years, and we just sit down, and we were talking, and he go, he started laughing. He goes, you haven't changed. I said, no, I still have a lot of fun, and we talked, and, and when I had 10 years ago when we had talked, I had sensed some things that God wanted to do in this man's life, and they had happened, and there was a smile on his face, a joy in his heart, and before we had come, uh, before we met, the Lord had spoken to my heart, and he said, I want you to mention this, this, and this. Just felt in my heart that the Lord had said to do it. So when we left that night, I, I, had, I mentioned the different areas and looked at me and said, you haven't changed, have you? He said, God still talked to you because those are the four, those are the four areas that I need that God is dealing with me and working me on. He goes, I'm excited. He goes, well, I'm excited that we're back together. The fun thing was is that, you know, you, you, you ask the Lord to put you to use to get you going, and he did. And I give God the glory because, you know, it's, it's just when the word of God goes out, and I just told him, I said, my heart is, is that you will find Jesus like I find Jesus, but in your way. And God constantly allows me to, to see that happen around us, and I'm, I'm thankful. Oh, I have so many responsibilities today. I'm just kidding. All right, any other testimonies? Yes. This happened a little while ago, but I just really feel the need to share. Um, I had taken a trip on an airplane. Haven't done that in a long time. But anyways, um, visited my sister on the way back. There was a um, couple of ladies that came sat next to me and I was the one next to the window and the lady says you have no idea this is so silly she said I already had set the seat for my friend when I bought the tickets but I forgot to put a seat for myself so that's why her and I are sitting next to you now because just this morning I had to like hurry up and and get two seats together so for whatever reason they ended up sitting next to me um I have pretty much all my life um, loved helping people and I just I really praise God for bringing these ladies into my life because I know that for the rest of my life this is going to give me day after day after day inspiration and simply the lady that sat next to me um, I, I work with special ed children she happened to have a special ed teen, and the lady on the end there, she happened to be a caretaker. So they were on this trip together because they've become very close to the point that not only caretaker, but the lady directly next to me is dying of cancer. And her special ed child is going to be taken by the lady sitting on the end. And like I said, this, for the rest of my life, this is going to touch me. I don't exactly know all of what God has in his plans for 
for what happened, what we talked about, all the things, because it touched me, I mean, in so many ways. It opened <laughs> many doors, and um, now it's trying to let it settle in so that I can stop and listen. Um, a lot of times I, I get so anxious and busy about which door is open, which door is open, and all of a sudden something came to my mind. Stop looking for the door that's open and just close your eyes for a minute and feel where the sunshine is coming in. So I just, I couldn't wait to share this with everyone. So I just, I hope it touches your heart the way it has mine. So, yeah, thank you. God appointments are the best appointments, yeah? Yes. I'm mad at you. I'm mad at me. Right? And delays. <laughs> and God's delays are intentional. Right? That was the thing. Okay. Um, all right. Any others? Oh. Hey. <laughs> More testimony. <laughs> all right. Speaking on uh, God's delays being intentional. There was uh, one particular Saturday, I think it was a couple weeks ago, where, uh, and anybody who knows mine and Lonnie's son, his, his limitations on, on what he wants to eat, it's very simple. There's only like three things that he wants to eat. So we asked him one Saturday morning, he was like, hey, Casey, what do you want to eat? And you guessed it, he wanted to eat hot dogs. So if you ask Lonnie, like, I, I used to work at Texas Roadhouse for years, and especially the one at Metro Center. Like that's the one where I spent the longest time at. I, I will go out of my way to drive a little bit extra to go to Happy Valley or to to Paradise Valley, not Paradise Valley, to Arrowhead, um, to go to those Texas Roadhouse and avoid Metro Center altogether. I, I don't know why. I just I would much rather eat at those particular roadhouses. But this particular Saturday, like I made the I, I guess a choice to go ahead and eat at the at Metro Center. I again, I I don't know why, but it was it's been years and years and years since I've gone. But there was there was a reason behind it. And Lonnie and I and Casey were enjoying ourselves, and and we see Holly, um, my boss's wife. She's running around. We see my boss's daughter. Like the entire family is, lives there, but we don't see my boss. So I'm like looking around because he's always there. You can always feel his presence. His, his aura is always there whenever he's there. And it, it was missing for some reason. And I'm looking around. And I asked Holly, I'm like, where's, where's Carrie? Like, where's, where's, where's Boss Man? Where's Carrie at? And then that's when we found out that uh, he has cancer. So this is not only a testimony, but kind of a, a prayer request as well. Because my testimony is that for some reason I chose to go to Metro Center that day. But the reason why is because I needed to find out that Carrie has cancer. And I, I still have his number from all those years back. So we've, we've been in constant contact from the point that I've uh, found out. And it, you can even ask Lonnie. I got really emotional there at the restaurant when I found out. I started crying a little bit because this man means so much to me. And what he's done for my life and how he's shaped who I am today. And, yeah, I heard it from... My pastor all the time, be bold. You you could do more, Hilson. You could do more. But he's also my father-in-law, so it's kind of a law for me to, like, neglect what he says. I just gave pastor. But but Carrie, <laughs> Carrie saw something in me where I was this shy, timid little Islander boy just, just serving food. But he, he went out of his way to kind of put me under his wings and, and just show me the ropes. And not only in, in the restaurant industry, but just how to be a good husband and a good father, and a good and decent human being, because I didn't have all of that just being born and raised in a Marshallese culture. Like, all I saw was how Marshallese do things, but now I got to see how an American professional just interacts with everybody else, and he taught me all of that. So um, it's been, what, 10, 9 or 10 years since I've talked to Carrie, but as soon as I found out, I texted him, and I've been texting him constantly, and uh, I let him know that uh, I'm going to, well, I asked him first, I was like, is it okay if I, if I ask for my church to pray for you? So um, this is where the, the prayer 
comes in, the prayer request. If you guys can help keep my friend Carrie in your prayers. He's battling pancreatic cancer right now. One of the healthiest, most fit, 50-something-year-old i ever known. But it's that's how cancer is, man. It doesn't really care who you are or what you do and or, you, or how you take care of your life. So I do remember and recall that he and I used to talk about God. So, But I, I haven't really prodded and asked where he, at, where he is in life right now, and especially when it comes to God, and that time will come. But I told him and I asked him, I was like, is it okay if I bring your name up to my church and pray for you? And he says, the more the merrier. So um, during your time of prayer, if you can go ahead and uh, keep my friend carrying your prayer. Okay, since we're going to go into prayer. I have a couple. Uh, this morning about 1.30, I got a text message from Rachel Hunter from San Carlos. Her son, um, I think he's 13 or 14, I'm not quite sure, was flown out with some extreme chest pain. And uh, this afternoon while I was driving in, I got a chance to talk to her. Her son is, is resting, but they're still uh, trying to get all that pneumonia out of his lungs, and it's it's just bad pneumonia. So she asked for prayer on that. And then also uh, my former pastor, um, Pastor Alexander from City Creek Assembly, is uh, dealing with some health issues. He's up there in age, I'm sure. But um, his family reached out and asked for prayer as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go do something different. Oops. Okay, I, I my p- pastor scares me sometimes, so I <laughs> I've asked his permission. But I'm gonna ask John to come up. The reason I asked John to come up is because many years ago, when John and I finally you know, we started hanging out after, you know, you know the story. After all of that, I had in my heart that there was coming a day when God was gonna use John in in in, in such a powerful manner when it comes to healings and miracles and and such of that. So I'm gonna give God that time right now to, to use John in that capacity. And if you're in need of prayer and need a touch in your body today, I encourage you, today is your moment to come up and uh, Pastor John will be laying hands on people. Amen. I feel weird praying into a mic, so that's a...
All right. No more testimonies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, man, God is good, guys. God is good. Um, my dad told me to go ahead and close out service because it is that time for us to close out service. So, um, three simple words. Come to church. Three other simple words. God's delays. Oh, that's four. God's delays are intentional. And God is good. Let's stand upon those promises. Take steps forward with him in mind. And boldly go where God has us to go. All right. Um, and if you have some offering. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I really wish you guys could hear that. Our little usher is so excited to go around and get offering today. Bust out those dollars. Get it out. <laughs> Man, that was amazing. All right. Um, and with that, and as we're coming around to collect the offering, um, I'm not going to pray, but I am just going to say that God is good. Have a blessed week. Rewatch the service as many times as you want. Because I'm sure there's something new that can be taken from it every single time. So today, I thank God that we were here together. Have an amazing, amazing week. And we will see you <laughs> next Sunday. All right. God bless.